Okay, we're starting in Photoshop Lesson 2, which is all about um, resolution and camera raw and the difference between a couple of uh, tools that we're going to be using. So, first thing we should do is let's open Photoshop. Remember, start all programs Adobe Photoshop. Let's go ahead and browse in our mini bridge. So launch bridge. And let's go ahead and click the drop down arrow and click on favorites. Click on Photoshop. Double click on Photoshop. Go to lessons. We are in lesson two. And we need to click to open the zero to start. And you'll notice that it has a little thing above it, little icons that tells you that it's going to open in camera raw. So once you double click, it may take a minute for it to open. And this is your camera raw screen, but the first step in um, for retouching is to retouch the resolution or the colors. The resolution refers to the number of pixels that describe an image and establish the details. So the resolution describes, you know, your picture and how it looks and all of the details of your picture. Um, camera raw saves um, the changes that you make sep in a five separate file that is associated with the original file. Um, I've noticed that when I work with Camera Raw, it'll save over the original, so you have to be pretty careful about how much you change it from the original um, after you save it or before you save it. First thing we should do is click the white balance tool. The white balance tool is at the top, so your Camera Raw screen, you have a dock with all of your sliders on it, and you also have a toolbar, but your toolbar is up at the top. So we want to click on white balance tool. And if you hover over the tool, it'll show you white balance. And what the white balance does is it changes all the colors to make what's supposed to be white actually white, and then it balances them. Um, so what part we should click on first is one of the puffy clouds in the background. So click, I'm going to click on this one right here. And notice that how all of the colors change. If you watch up here, as you change colors, these things will balance out more, and that's what we want. So let's click on the girl's shoe also, and notice how it balances out even more. Click the basic panel to the right, which is on your dock, it's right here. And move the temperature slider to negative 53. Okay, so your first two deal with temperature. Temperature refers to how cold or hot a picture is. So this it goes all the way to yellow and blue. So we want the picture to actually have a negative 53 temperature and your tint is the greens and the yellows and the purples and we want that to be a negative 54. Um, White balance is always a good place to start, but sometimes you have to adjust it even more to get it just how you want it. Um, the next section of the panel um, is exposure. These are the light and darkness of the picture. Um, the exposure refers to how much light is shown in the picture. So for example, when you have the old cameras with the negatives and you expose too much light, they were really dark and when you didn't have enough light they weren't dark enough. We want the exposure to be a negative 0 0.5 and the blacks, so skip down to the blacks and we want the black slider to be at 18 and we want the contrast to be a positive 23. 
So notice already how much sharper our image looks. It looks more brighter. Um, the blacks darkens it to give it more of a realistic look and the contrast shows the difference between having too much light and too much dark. That's what this whole section is about. In the bottom section of your panel is clarity and vibrance and saturation. This is more about the color and the clear, the cleanness of the color and the look of the color. So let's move our clarity slider to 12 and you can actually move the slider or you can type in the numbers. Um, you want your vibrance to be 25 and your saturation to be 5. Okay, so now it looks fairly bright. All of our colors are very bright. They stand out. So now what we can do is click open image at the bottom. You want to open the image. Opening the image will take the picture, our adjusted picture, to Photoshop. Remember, if this happens, you just click on your history panel at the very top, so that way it'll open fully. Um, now, let's, we need to save this so we can actually finish editing. So you can go File and Save As. Remember, we have to go to Photoshop. Excuse me, you actually have to go to your name and Assignments and create a new folder called Photoshop lesson 2 and that Photoshop lesson 2 folder you can save it as 0 to start okay there's a couple other things wrong with this picture as far as it's not straight when we want pictures we always want them to be straight um, the first way to do that or the way that we're going to do it is we are going to find the ruler tool. The ruler tool is hidden behind the eyedropper tool which is um, right here. So you click and hold on the eyedropper tool and find the ruler tool. The ruler tool it turns your um, mouse into a actual ruler, what looks like a ruler. Position your mouse to the top left corner of the picture. And notice you've got a little black arrow. You want that part to be right on the corner. Click and hold um, on the mouse and drag to the right corner following the slope. So you're going to click and hold right here on the left and you're going to drag down to the right and you're going to follow the slant of the picture okay so you're going to follow make sure you follow the slant of the picture when you do that then go up to your options bar and click straighten layer and what it did is it took it and it um, straightened it out so that way it actually looks straight so now the next thing that we're going to have to do is we have to crop off all of this white part. We don't want all this white part around our picture. We don't need it. You also see the transparent background. We don't need that part either. So let's click on our crop tool. And we are going to change uh, the width and height to 3.5 press tab and we want it by 2.5 so it automatically sets it for us and now we can drag in on the corners to our picture and you may have to go inside the picture just a little bit but not too far just to make sure you get all the white part off Once you have your um, crop tool adjusted correctly uh, to adjust what you want to keep, go ahead and press enter. You may have to press it twice um, just to get it to work. So that way you notice that the edges 
So your crop tool will allow you to get rid of unwanted edges that you have available. Um, now, because we have set a constraint on our crop tool, we need to actually reset the tool. Remember to reset the tool. You have the little crop uh, picture on the option bar. Click the drop down arrow. Go down to the little gear and click on reset tool. Resetting the tool will just take it so that constraint's not there anymore. So that way when you go to work on your assignments, you don't have to worry about the constraint and chopping off parts or getting rid of parts of the picture that you don't want because you have a constraint. Okay, let's go ahead and click on the zoom tool. In the zoom tool, we are going to zoom in a little bit on the girl's hat. We don't have to go in too far. This is far enough. And we are going to start replacing the colors. So, once you have zoomed in on the child's hat, we need to find our color replacement tool. And it's hidden behind the brush tool. So if you go to your brush, click and hold, and click on color replacement. Click the color panel on the dock. So we go to our color panel. And change the red slider to 49 the green to 184 and the blue to 6. So we're going to change the pink to green. On the option bar open the, bra the brush pop-up menu. So the brush pop-up menu. Change the slide size of the slider to 15. You want the hardness to be at 40% and the spacing to be at 25. Um, for tolerance and size at the bottom, you want both of those to be off. Then you can click off of the pop-up menu to close the pop-up menu. You want to change the mode For where it says color, you want to change the mode to hue. Click the sampling continuous, which is the first icon. Change the limits for tolerance. Uh, sorry, change the limits to find edges. So limits, find edges, and tolerance to be. 32. Now what I would do is I would start somewhere in the middle and just paint a nice strip across. If you notice it pretty much follows the plus sign in the middle of where the color is going to go. So if you go over it multiple times keep your plus sign inside of the actual hat and you won't paint on the girl's face. Please don't make her an alien. That's not what we're going for. We're trying to just replace the color of the hat. And if you do happen to get a part of her hair or something, you can always change it. Go to your history panel and hit undo or edit undo. Now I know it won't be perfect because this tool is kind of hard to use. So the color replacing will allow you to pick a color and it will find all of the pixels within that color with green or with whatever color you have available. The more times you go over it, the darker it will get. Okay, once you are done, let's save and let's also go view fit on screen. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the saturation. And saturation, what saturation is, is it makes the um, purity of the color, it makes it brighter. So think of um, 
in science when we talk about a saturated ground is a wet ground. It's like painting with a wet brush. It'll give the colors more brightness because it's got water in it to reflect the light or whatever. Um, so select the sponge tool which is hidden behind the dodge tool which looks like a dart or a sucker or something whatever you want to call that and click on the sponge tool. On the option bar you need to click the pop out menu or the picker and you want the size to be 150. You want the hardness to be zero which it is. Change the mode. Right now the mode says desaturate. We want to saturate. So you want it to say saturate for the mode. And the flow needs to be 40. The flow value determines the, inten the intensity of the effect. So we don't want it to be very intense. We want it to be just just slightly. Click and drag over the graffiti to the left of the girl to increase the intensity. So you're going to start at the left of the girl and just drag over the graffiti. And I'm going to tell you, you'll probably have to go over it about three times to get it as bright as you want. But if you notice as you're doing it, it does get brighter ever so slightly. Okay, if you get too much saturation in a picture, it'll make it look futuristic and neon, kind of like uh, cosmic bowling when it's under a black light or something like that. So now you can see the difference between saturated, um, a saturated picture in color than a non-saturated. Saturation focuses mostly on the primary color, which is yellow. So that's why it's focusing on that yellow and pulling that yellow out to make it the brightest. Let's click on our move tool so we don't accidentally, accidentally um, saturate something else. And let's go ahead and save. Okay, if you've noticed that on um, up here on the brick wall, we've got a tear. We also have some dark spots that we need to fix. So we're going to work with two different tools on repairing areas. First one we're going to work with is the clone stamp tool. Um, so let's click on the clone stamp tool, which looks like a big rubber stamp. And your clone stamp tool uses pixels from one area of an image to replace the pixels of another. Um, you can remove unwanted objects from a picture, but you can also repair damage of scanned images. What it's telling you is we are going to pick where we want to replace. So we are going to pick somewhere over here to replace the pixels right here. Okay. So with the clone stamp tool, you need to remember that you set the sample area. So before we start trying to pick um, pixels and things like that, we need to go up to the option bar and change the size. So we need the brush picker or the stamp picker. And we want the size, make sure it's 21. So you need it to be 21. You need the hardness to be zero. Make sure that the aligned option is checked. You want a check mark in there. The align option allows you to start stamping wherever you're at. If it is not selected where you begin sampling from, the same source point regardless of where you place your tool. So what it's telling you is it's just going to align within the pixels of where you're sampling from. Click on window and click on clone source. Okay, when you click the clone source, it should give you a panel that looks like this. You may have to um, click a little drop down arrow to make it fully open. This panel allows you to have greater control of your clone stamp tool. Make sure that there are check marks in the overlay and clipped options. Show overlay and clipped. Um, overlay allows you to see what you are cloning before you stamp it. Position the mouse over the darker bricks to the right of the girl's hat.
Okay, before you can do that, sorry, you actually need to go all the way over to the far right of the picture. And I want you to press the Alt key. Press and hold the Alt key. Notice it gives you a little target. Click once. And now, if you drag over the white part, you see this white part right here, and it shows a little thing that's following my mouse. That is your overlay. So now what I want you to do is I want you to kind of line it up a little bit and drag to the left over that white portion. Notice how it stays in the line with our mouse. So when you're clicking and dragging over, there's a little plus sign that hangs out over here that's showing you where you are sampling from. Okay, with the clone stamp tool, you may have to actually click your sample area more than once to get your hat to or to get your sample to replace it correctly because if you notice the further down I go it's all still in alignment and it's trying to uh, it'll you'll have to pick multiple times the further down you go so the clone stamp tool you can't just click it once and hope that you have it set for good you will have to use it. You will have to use it multiple times. That's why I don't really like using the clone stamp tool as much as the next tool that we are going to use. Go ahead and click save. The next tool that we're going to use is the spot healing um, brush tool. And what I want you to do is click on the spot healing brush, which looks like the band aid. Make sure it's the first one, the spot healing. Spot Healing Brush is an ex it's re, um, excellent for retouching blemishes and portraits, so if you've got a zit in a school picture, you can actually cover it up. You can use the clone tool, but you must grab a sample area from the picture. However, the nice thing about the Spot Healing Brush is it paints with sampled, pixel, sampled pixels from the image and pattern, and, and what it does is it takes a sample area from where you're at in your picture and molds it all together for you. So Photoshop will set the sample area for the spot healing brush and it makes it a lot nicer and it makes it look a lot nicer. So with the spot healing brush you need to remember that Photoshop sets the sample area for you. Um, on the option bar you want your spot healing brush, you want hardness to be zero, or 100 and the size to be 40. And you can press enter just to get out of the box. Uh, position the mouse to the right of the spot. So let's, we're going to spot, we're going to touch this up right here. So what we're going to do is position your mouse to the right. And you're going to drag it across. And you'll get a dark area. And then release your mouse. And what Photoshop does is in that dark area, it takes all the pixels around it and it mashes them together to make it look nice. So go ahead and do the bottom part of it as well. Notice how it matches pretty well. I mean bricks have always got these different spots. Okay another spot I want you to fix is over here right here. And go ahead and click and drag to the right. So now I want you guys to try to um, cover up these. Now, you may have to make your brush a little bit smaller, so let's go and make it, let's do about 20 pixels. And just click and drag to the right. Now if you start getting black, it probably means you got too close to the edge and it's not going to set correctly. But that's how you get rid of the dark spots. Um, and if you have any, you know, little things that you have to touch up, it's easier to use the spot healing brush than the clone stamp tool sometimes. Okay, so we are finished with the lecture, but let's kind of take a minute to review. Make sure you've saved. The most important thing you need to remember is the difference between the spot healing and the clone stamp tool. The clone stamp tool, you have to set the sample area. Remember to set a sample area, you have to press and hold the Alt key and set the sample area. 
and then release the alt key and drag over what you're wanting to um, fix the spot healing brush Photoshop sets it for you and let's see resolution is the number of pixels that describe an image so it's how, the look of the image and you have camera raw which allows you to retouch uh, touch up pictures saturation is the brightness of the picture and it's like painting with water and makes it everything bright um, so let's go ahead and we can make sure you have saved and you can close Photoshop.